Hi, my name is Tai Mitsuji, and I'm interviewing Brad and Snape about his 2020 work, Elusive Object in Red for Art Collector, as part of the Pool Focus series. Brad, thank you for joining me from Newcastle today. No problem at all, Tai. Glad to be here. Wonderful. Um, so I was really taken with your work because it has such a presence. I mean, you know, it's obviously large, but it consists of, you know, welded, inflated and polished stainless steel. I want to know about the process that underpins that sort of, you know, almost monumental, you know, size and, and structure. Well, the process is the thing that drives everything in the work right now. Um, since I sort of stumbled across that process it really is breeding the content in the work at the same time so i'm kind of being led by the process and then feeding back into it and then sort of then re-led so it's this reiterative kind of process and i'm enjoying it so much the materiality the kind of the the physical relationship with the with the material and the process and the immediacy of it, of it in in a sense because it happens so quickly in the end you know Sculpture traditionally can be a very slow or laborious process. I mean, there's a fair bit of preparation beforehand uh, with the welding and preparing surfaces and stuff like that. But the final realization of the work happens depending on how, how quickly and how game I am to blow it up quickly. Um, it happens in a couple of minutes. So it's, it's happening in the moment. So I'm really enjoying all those aspects of, of the making of the work. Uh, so that this particular work starts off as three flat pieces, mm -hmm. uh, three flat identical profiles, which are then uh, sort of folded through the middle, sort of origami style, if you like, so that I can get all of the edges together to weld them together, to sort of fuse weld them all together. And then pretty much a valve goes into the, into the edge and then I'm inflating. So... If you look through the middle of the form, you'll see there's a kind of a crease line and that was a straight fold and that's been pushed back out. So it's, it's very hard to describe without seeing the process, but that's, that's, the, that's the, the process in its basics anyway. Wow, so, so you're, you're inflating the metal like a balloon almost. That's right, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. And the, and the metal's not really stretching, it's stretching a tiny bit, but yeah. and the welds are giving. But really, it's just, it's whatever the amount of material in relation to the profile that I use, the shapes or profiles, kind of dictates the, the, the void of the form that I can create or the, the volume of the form, if you like. It's the material giving wherever it can. So that's why you've got all that crumpling and, and so on. It's not stretching like a balloon. And I particularly decided early on that I would do it... Um, cold as well so it's cold inflation whereas potentially another method is that i put it put the whole thing in a kiln heat right. it up to be red hot and then it, it would blow up more sort of beautifully if you like because the, the, the material is more elastic then if you like and more malleable so um, it would be kind of more perfect but this is about imperfection right this is about the, the kind of the, the failures and the peculiarities of the material yeah, it strikes me um, that you're almost in dialogue with the material, that, you know, that there are two artists at work here, um, in a way, it's you and the steel. Oh, for sure. Me, me, the steel and the process, yeah, the act of the process, yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting. And I guess, you know, there, there would be, and this is something I think you've spoken about before, an element of chance in, in, in the shape that comes out, in the very dimples that you sort of pointed to. Definitely, particularly when I'm trying some new shapes or combinations of forms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of unknown. If, if I've done something that's sort of a step on from, from before, I have a kind of a fair idea of what will happen with a particular shape or the proportions of a particular shape when it inflates. And so I'm, you know, I've been doing it for, it's about seven years now. So I'm starting to, I'm learning more and more all the time about, you know, what I can and can't do or what I potentially could achieve. But it's always throwing surprises at me, you know. Yeah, but, but I mean, I guess that's rewarding, right? You, after seven years, it's still expanding. Uh, oh, you know. yeah, exactly right. The, the expanding word is perfect because I say that the more things I tick off the list, the more that add onto the bottom, 
of things I would like to explore and try with this process. So my list gets longer, you know, and I learn something new about it every time or it takes me off on a different tangent. Mm -hmm. So these works, this sort of series of elusive object works are playing with that kind of, uh, that sort of fin-like edge, mm -hmm. you know, and that adds another element of unpredictability in the work because those little fins, some inflate, some bend one way, some the other way. And, you know, one crease over here kind of dictates what happens over here. Right. It's kind of all these relationships that sometimes I can dictate. Yeah. And other times it has a life of its own, kind of like all that. In a sense, interconnected because it is so tensile. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So in, in, if the metal creases in this one place, that kind of forces it to do something else related, you know, in response to that nearby or, or on, on the other side of the form. Mm. So, yeah, all those kind of relationships. So, so interesting. I've, I've heard you, and I guess we've already spoken to this uh, in, a, in a way, but I've heard you uh, talk about the process as almost action sculpture. Yeah, for sure. Because because particularly that final realization, mm -hmm. you know, it's happening in the moment, mm -hmm. um, and I so much enjoy that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, there's all this adrenaline at the same time. You're doing this thing where there's pressure and and, and so on, and it's kind of you know, it's me responding to how it's inflating as well, as to how far I push it. I'm always wanting to push them as far as I can. You know, yeah. I can't help myself. But, you know, but potentially if I push them too hard, mm. um, I can make a big blowout and something that, that's, that might wreck the form the way I, you know, envisaged it or the way it was looking and then I've gone too far and it becomes something else. Mm. Although that hasn't happened very often. Some, you know, I get little leaks in them and so on. But in saying that, I, on my list of things to do is, is to do a whole series of blown out kind of, works yeah. so 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 blow out um yeah so popping a seam basically oh, yeah, okay. yeah right. popping a seam open so you know so i do it slowly so that if i do pop a seam yeah. um it doesn't go a big bang kind of thing it might just open a little section right. which i can then potentially you know push back in and repair right. um but if it gets too big you know because the metal crumples you can't sort of get it back together so that's a series of works to potentially to, to play with that idea of it being opened up. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah. I love how, you know, elusive, um, elusive object is already sort of in dialogue with a future, you know, work that you have. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so it has got this fantastic name, Elusive Object in Red. Um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about that title? Well, I was playing with, you know, when you verbally say the word uh, elusive, you know, mm -hmm. it, it relates to elusive, you know, you could be mm -hmm. saying the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And these, these objects, particularly with these fin kind of series of works, yeah, sure, they allude to things, you know, people have come to me with all these different associations, often sea life and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. because, you know, humans want to find an association to something. Yeah, of course, yeah. But also, it's, it's, they're so elusive, right? Because yeah. particularly with these mirrored surfaces and, you know, highly finished surfaces, all that reflection, it's really hard to grasp the form, you know? You, you kind of, you, you've got this under sort of sense of a form, but particularly as you move around it, it changes so much. And because of the buckles and the, it's kind of like the feedback, if you like, of the reflections back into each other, yeah. it's hard to know where the surface is, so... That's kind of where I settled on that that titling, right? Yeah, that's so interesting because it both alludes to these things in the world and yet doesn't quite. It also eludes your grasp. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. yeah. I love. I love. I'm pretty pleased with myself when I, when I <laughs> settled on that. But uh, yeah, because I mean, this work is also about abstraction. You know, right. it's about trying to attain that thing that you can't quite grasp. You know, for me, that's the beauty of abstraction. It's sure we can sort of find connections with things and associations to things, mm -hmm. but great abstraction means, you know, it's this new thing. We've almost kind of invented something, you know? So that's what I like about abstraction. Yeah. Fantastic. Look, thank you so much for your time and your generous descriptions. That was so fascinating. Um, and we'll talk to you again soon. No worries. It was a great pleasure. Cheers.